Hey, it's Joe from JoeColantonio.com. In this video, I'm going to show how easy it is to create a virtual service to test your APIs using Ready APIs Service V. Check it out. So in my Test Talks podcast, I recently interviewed Paul Bruce from SmartBear about service virtualization and all the benefits you get from using a tool like Service V. A lot of the topics, though, that Paul talked about really required a visual type of familiarity with the tools. So I thought it'd be a great idea just to create a quick video to show you how easy it is to use Service V just to get a sense for the type of things that we talked about within this interview. So I'm going to open up Ready API. And under Ready API under SOAP UI, I'm going to create a new project. And it's going to be a new REST project. So for this example, I'm going to be using Google's Books API. So the URL I'm going to enter is the Google Books URL. And I want to search volumes. So I'm going to click OK. All right, cool. So I'm just going to rename a few things. You don't have to do this, but I'm just going to do it just so I'm able to keep track of things better. So for my project, I'm just going to call it Joe Service V Project. And for my request, I'm just going to rename that Get Books. All right, cool. So basically, in SOAP UI, I just want to set up my REST test to make sure it's working. So I, I want to search the Google Books API, and I basically want to do a query to search for a certain term, a certain author. So I'm going to click on the Add for parameters. So I know that for this API, it has a Q parameter for your query, and I want to query for the name Turing. All right, now I'm just going to run my test. Awesome. Notice it returned a response, and that response has returned JSON. And JSON, it's just going to be a list of books that it found that matched the term Turing. So notice the first item returned is Alan Turing for the title. And the second one is Turing's Cathedral, and so on. Now, what would happen if this API was a service that charged you every time you made a request to it and got a response back? So say your application interacts with a lot of third-party APIs. Um, say you interact with Twitter. If you were to use Twitter, they have certain restrictions saying you can only send 15 requests in a day or an hour or 15 minutes. So if you're doing a performance test or any types of tests to really test your application that have to interact with that service, how do you do that if there's a restriction like a, a, re a response restriction or you get charged for it? So one way to get around an issue like that is to use a virtual service. So I'm just going to select all these and copy it. So to create a virtual service, I'm just going to right click on my request, which is the HTTPS googleapis.com. And then I'm going to select generate vert. So I'm going to click on generate vert. I'm going to change the name and I'm just going to call this Joe vert. So click OK. All right. So now that's going to bring me to the service V section of ready API. And notice I have my Joe vert that I created. And now you have a few options. And what you can do is add different responses. I'm just going to create a new response. I'm going to click on Add Response. I'm going to call this Joe Get Books. And under Joe Get Books, I'm just going to select the content type to be JSON. And I'm just going to paste in that JSON that we got returned back from the actual Google API for books. And now I'm just going to muck around with the data a little. So I'm just going to change the title to Joe Calantonio. Automation made awesome. And I'm just going to change the author to Joe Calantonio. All right, so that's all I'm going to do right now. So once I've changed the data that I want to change, I'm just going to start the Joe vert. And then go back to SOAP UI. And under SOAP UI, I'm going to go back to my get book request. So now under endpoints, notice how we have the original endpoint, which is the actual Google API. And now we have a new one, which is the URL now to our virtual service. So this is my local machine name and a port number. So let's just run this pointing to our virtual service now and see what happens. Cool. Notice it did make a request and it got a response back. But this time, rather than hitting the third-party API, which is Google Books, it hit our virtual service. And in the virtual service, you know it's our virtual service because it contains the data that we just changed. I know this is a very simple example, but just think of all the possibilities now 
that you can do in order to help your testing efforts. So there's a few things right off the bat that you might be able to notice that you can start doing here. Is that, say for example, you are working in a sprint team and your developers are still developing an API, but the API is not ready yet, but you want to be able to start creating your test. So rather than waiting around to the last day, say of the sprint where they finally say, here's the API, go test it now. You could be ready for that by creating a virtual service that returns back the JSON that you expect or the data that you expect. It doesn't have to only be JSON. And then you can start writing your test to handle all the different types of scenarios that you want to test. So when your API finally is live, all you need to do then is change the endpoint from your virtual service to your actual URL of your API. So that's one thing off the bat. Also, you could do all kinds of destructive things with this. Notice when you go back to the virtual service, you can change things like the response code. So for example, in my team, we have a bunch of edge cases where they need to test these different response codes. And some of these response codes only happen when a service is down. So if you're testing in a CI environment and you have some of these tests, you can't really run them because you don't want to take a, a service down because if you're running in parallel, some of your other tests might be affected or uh, some of these may not be easy to automate because you actually have to physically unplug a server and you, you know how real you, that's not really realistic when you're running a, a regression suite to have to worry about that. So using a virtual cert, that'd be one way to get around this to be able to still test that you're able to handle a negative condition like this. So there's a whole bunch of other scenarios. If you want to learn about more, make sure to head on over to testtalks.com forward slash 52 to listen to my full interview with Paul Bruce from SmartBear about service virtualization. And I'll also have in the notes of this video, a link back to my post where I write step-by-step -step how to create a virtual service and some other examples of why you would want to use a virtual service. So that's how you create a virtual service using Service V. Hope it helps.